Now in earlier videos, we've been looking at um, how to solve quadratic equations. We've been doing it by graphing. Uh, we've also been doing it by a tedious way that always works, which was vertex form. Uh, then we looked at a special case of something that doesn't always work, but if it does, it's really quick, which is factoring. But the question is, isn't, you know, is there some way or some method that works in every case? And the answer, of course, is yes. We have what's called the quadratic equation. So again, if we have something that goes y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, hopefully you're recognizing that is general form for a quadratic equation. If we have it like this, then we can always find what the um, zeros are. So zeros, remember, or the roots, or the x-intercepts, can always be found this way. In other words, if we want to set this equal to zero, so ax squared plus bx plus c, if we want to set this equal to zero, which is what the roots are doing, then what values of x work? And it just goes like this. This again is going to seem like it comes sort of out of the sky, out of nowhere, but it doesn't. There's actually a reason for this. In fact, uh, I'm going to do a set of videos that'll actually show where this derivation came from. But it goes x equals minus b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac, all that over 2a. This is probably a student's favorite way of doing it, of solving quadratic equation or solving yeah quadratics, and it's actually to use this quadratic equation. Now this plus or minus is important. That tells you that there's two answers, right? There's minus b plus this junk divided by 2a, and there's minus b minus this junk over 2a. Now the key thing is to take a look at uh, a couple. Of, well. I'm going to show you a few other things. I think first of all, I'd like to show you what the discriminant is. So this is also important. Just because this can actually help us to know what the answers are going to look like. I'm going to call the discriminant D. Some people will write it with a delta or something. I'm just going to say D. D, it turns out, is just B squared minus 4AC. In other words, it's this inner part. And this discriminant can tell you what kinds of different solutions we have. Yes, I'm going to show you some different graphs here. So what if, what if I have a graph that goes like, I don't know. Remember, we've got quadratics. We've been seeing lots of examples. So what if, what if it goes like this? In other words, it crosses the axis twice. That's going to be one case. We're going to look at another case where it only touches it. In other words, it just, just barely touches. And instead of making it up, maybe I can make it a downwards facing one. It doesn't matter. But let's just say I make it go something like this. This is also a quadratic, but it only touches the axis once. And we can also have solutions or you know situations where we have a quadratic that doesn't even touch it. So maybe it's something like, like that. In other words, it never crosses it. So this one right here, I'm going to write down. There are two real solutions here. In other words, there's two real values here and here. Those are the two real answers. When I say real, it's because in mathematics we have something called real numbers, which is everything you've ever heard of and can imagine. But it turns, well, I shouldn't say imagine. Everything you've heard of or can write down or anything you can think of is called real numbers. Any number you can normally think about. We have a situation here where we have only one real solution, but we have this answer here which has no real solutions. In other words, it doesn't cross the axis. Now you might wonder why am I bothering to say the word real? Why don't I just say two answers, one answer, no answers? And that's because in mathematics there's a whole other field uh, that says that, well, there's no real solutions, but it turns out if you go into uh, something called imaginary numbers, then there are actually imaginary solutions. And you might think that sounds totally wacky, and for a lot of students that really is. But it's a, it's a very interesting uh, branch of mathematics where we, where we don't let uh, square roots of negative numbers stop us, so to speak. But for right now, we will let negative numbers 
uh, or square roots of negative numbers be a problem. In other words, we're going to just look at real solutions and see what happens. Well, take a look here now. Remember I said this is minus b plus or minus this junk over 2a? So if we have two real solutions, that means the answer in this square root, you know, there's no problem with it. In other words, we can, we can do it, we can calculate it, we can find it. So in this case then, because of that, we can say then that d is greater than zero. In other words, the discriminant is positive. That's what this means. If this gives something positive, let's say I do b squared minus 4ac and I end up with an answer of, I don't know, five. Then I could say that minus whatever, plus or minus square root of five over 2a, and that means I'll have two answers, right? Minus b plus this square root of five and minus b minus the square root of five. Of course, all of those are over 2a. Now, how do I get a situation where there's only one real solution? Well, maybe you can already think about it because remember, um, what's, what this discriminant ends up being, it can be positive, turns out it can also be zero. Imagine this turns out to be exactly zero. In other words, b squared is exactly the same as uh, 4ac. So it turns out if you have like, I don't know, maybe this is like 25. So then 25 minus 25 would give you a zero. That could happen. So if we get a zero here, square root of zero is still zero. That means then we'd have minus b plus or minus zero. Well, plus zero or minus zero is the same thing. So that's why the answer would just be x equals minus b over 2a, nothing else. So that's why we can say then that in this situation right here, we can say that d equals 0. Okay, the discriminant is equal to 0. Here it was positive. Now what about this situation with no real solutions? Well, that's when we try to take the square root of a negative number. I'm going to get out my trusty calculator here. I've got an emulator that's going to load, but I think it'll take it a few seconds to load here. So that's just to show you what the calculator actually sees. So just to give you an example here, once it actually loads, I'm going to try to take the square root of a negative number. Because I'm going to say, what, what happens if I take, you know, if b squared minus 4ac is not positive? So what happens if it's negative? Well, I can bring my little calculator over here. And I can say, great, um, I'd like to quit this. I just wanna, I wanna try to take the square root. Remember before when I was doing square root of five, well, that worked fine, there was no problem there. Square root of zero, I'm just showing you these examples here. So square root of five gave you two answers. Right? It would be plus this and minus this. Square root of zero, it still gives me zero. So I wasn't lying here. But the third situation is, what if I take the square root of a negative number? So square root of, let's say, negative 5. Let's just say. It's going to say error. Now, it doesn't say it can't do it. It just says non-real answer. In other words, I have an answer, but it's not real. It's not anything that you can just draw here like this. So I could say no real solutions here. So this is an example of something that doesn't cross the x-axis. See, this is the x-axis. This graph doesn't cross it. So this is an example of something where the discriminant is less than zero or negative. So if you wanna see how many roots something has, uh, you can actually tell, without even doing all the whole calculation, you can at least tell if it has two answers, one answer, or no answers, real ones at least, by just looking at b squared minus four ac. Let's go back just to put this back into context. What was these B and what was A and what was C? Those were given by your original general form of your quadratic equation here, or the quadratic uh, general form. So when we use this quadratic equation, this is what we mean. This is the solution. So we get zeros you know, for a quadratic at these points, right? Minus B plus this over this and minus B minus this over this. So that's how we can actually use quadratics uh, in a very useful way.